Your sensors are correct. Do not adjust your heading. Your heading. You've discovered the Omega Particle. Streaming to the Alpha Quadrant and beyond. 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 Here's your host. The Anchorman of the Federation. The Doctor of Dilithium. This is Jonathan Wiegand. Welcome to the Omega Particle. I am your gracious and humble host, Jonathan Wiegand. And boy, do we have a treat for you today. We have a very special guest joining us today on the podcast. A longtime friend of OPP. And it's my fun and gorgeous wife. And we will be reviewing the famous, or should I say infamous, TNG episode, Sub Rosa. However, this is unlike any other review we've done before on OPP. Normally, you know, Strange New Worlds, Picard, other episodes, we've kind of just go through what we like, dislike, etc., Easter eggs. But we have actually decided to change it up a little bit because we are adding the solution to and cause of all life's problems. Yes, I'm talking about alcohol. <laughs> We uh, wanted to follow, you know, in the comedic stylings of Drunk History and cover Trek while throwing a, back a few. And next thing you know, Tipsy Trek was born. And here we are. I, I would like to make this an ongoing series and, you know, have a different guest come on and talk about episodes of Star Trek or maybe movies, etc. But we'll keep you updated as it goes forward. Anyway, I don't want to hold up any more of your time because this gets pretty wild and pretty crazy. Like, for example, did Disney rip off Encanto from this episode? And really, what's the definition of a cougar? Is it 10 years, 50 years, 60 years? Anyway, all, all of that and more will be answered on this episode. So without further ado, Luna, let's light this candle. We're reviewing Sub Rosa, which is season seven, episode fourteen. Wait, um, what's it called? Sub Rosa. That's what they call it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't even know that. <laughs> I know, right? Like it doesn't make any sense why they would call it Sub Rosa. Well, didn't he give her roses? I guess. I mean he did, but why would they call it Sub Rosa? Now I'm Googling. Because he's subpar. <laughs> he's a subpar he's... lover. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, I wonder why hold on. He's a ghost from that's a 165th episode of Star Trek. That's interesting. Yeah, so this was actually in 2016. Fans of the 50th anniversary of Star Trek convention voted Sub Rosa as the sixth, worth ep- sixth worst episode of Star Trek been, series. I think you've been drinking I think much. I've been drinking a little too much. Um, <laughs> Let's crack another one. And then um, in 2017, it was ranked the eighth best romantic episode of Star Trek Noted for its exploration of sexual dreams. Yeah, so that sixth worst episode. So it was rated the sixth worst episode, and then it was rated the eighth best romantic episode. It makes me think that there's a lot of more romantic episodes in Star Trek besides just that. that <laughs> As you crack open another drink. <laughs> this is a seltzer, so it's not like <laughs> beer, but we have our intern Luna. She's here, so she can. You have to debate with her on editing. Um, I'm not allowed to edit, so she's also at the at our table here. So she'll also she'll be in charge of editing, and she doesn't have to write any scripts this week, so that's good. Hey, Luna. We can hear her, but she can't hear us, so that's good. She's got her mic on. She has her. Well, she shouldn't have a mic on. She's only an intern. Anyway, oh. so Sub Rosa, it was. I've always shared it. Like when I watch TNG, I always skip it because it's such a bad episode. I thought you were a true fan, John. I there's some episodes I skip. It's like Scott's Tots for The Office. This is like Sub Rosa. For Wait, you Star. skip Scott's Tots? Everybody skips Scott Scott's Tots. Why? Is it because it's cringe? It's, yeah, it's like, hey, Miss Scott, what you gonna do? Like, every no one wants to watch that. That's actually very true. Like we always skip. It's like, it. oh, you're disappointing children. Okay. Yeah, I was like, and so it's like this one's like this weird sexual ghost stuff. I, I would actually watch say that. this is more of a cringe episode than Scott's Tots. Yes, that's a bold hot take. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would not watch this with, like, our son. 
Well, like if if I showed him Star Trek, like eight years old, well, I would not show him this. Well, episode. yeah, I mean that that could go for any franchise for the most part. I don't think Star Wars has a ghost sex <laughs> episode. Okay, don't give them ideas. <laughs> well, they could now. You never know. Um, so let me pull up my notes here. <laughs> yeah, like I said, so it was voted the sixth worst one. And the funny thing is, Jonathan Frakes directed this. Oh, what's, so, go, what's going on with him? <laughs> I don't know. Well, this was like, I think in May, it's 70, so it was like May in 96. So this is like the tail end of Star Trek. But just an episode recap for people that haven't seen it. The episode is that they go to Beverly, they go to a planet called uh, Kaldos. And, they, <laughs> and it's because Beverly Crusher's grandmother, quote unquote Nana, dies at like a hundred and something years old. And so she dies, and they go to the, the funeral, and they bury her, and, and then she's kind of going through her journals and, like, get this house and et cetera. And then she meets this man named Quince, who warns her that the house is haunted, and that he needs to destroy the candle, yada, 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 that the candle is some an- anaphasmic being that uh, lives through the candle and has been literally a whore to this Howard family line from 1647, so for 800 years, <laughs> sleeping with grandmothers and, and not grandmothers and all this. And then at the very end, they destroy him, and Beverly destroys the candle and shoots him. So that's the episode re- recap real quick in like 30 seconds. I mean, I don't think it's like the worst thing I've ever watched, but, you know, I mean, I liked it. I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> Really? I thought it was a unique storyline, you know? Really? Yeah. I... I thought it had some, um, I don't know for Disney people out there, but it had some Encanto vibes. The house was alive? <laughs> the, 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 it was a candle that determined... Uh... Oh my gosh, is this Encanto? Like, <laughs> so the candle was the former lover of the grandmother in Encanto. And then like the house came alive and they had this relationship... Gave him powers. This could be like an X-rated version of Encanto. I never thought about that. <laughs> I mean, that's what I thought. I was like, so this candle is like keeping this guy alive and like, you know, is ruling the house and blah, blah, blah. I was like, it's got some it's sexy some, Encanto. Vibe. It's like triple X-rated Encanto. That's disgusting. <laughs> because, and again, a reminder. So the grandma, Nana, was 100 years old when she died. But the dude, I see Ronan, why she lived to be a hundred. She was having a good time. Well, that's gross because he was thirty-four. Am I wrong? Am he I... was thirty-four, and I'm thirty-four, so that makes it nasty to be like, oh, if where you are at this current state of life, you would be having sex with a hundred-year-old woman, and that's nasty. He didn't look thirty-four. He looked a good. <laughs> <He> looked, <laughs> I think thirty-four was very. Generous. I mean, to be considering he's eight hundred years old and like stuck I mean, in like. But a, he's like a ghost, so it's like. Eh. Yeah, but it's like you know. He's definitely pushing mid forties. Oh yeah. He's not. The thirty-four is a stretch. <laughs> he's not. Yeah, he's not thirty-four in any way, shape, or form. But what I thought was so funny is that Grandma was taking this whole cougar thing to a whole new level. He was like, "Oh no, no, no." no. I'm not just a cougar. I am like a panther. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, it's like a 70, it's like a 60 some odd difference, year difference. So that's kind of gross. Yeah, but like wouldn't you say she's like, as far as cougars go, she's like a goal? Like she's like goals. Well, th- I don't think I'll be wanting to have sex when I'm 100 years old. Yeah, but not you, but some people. But I'd just be happy to be alive. Like norm- if you ever see those people on the news, they're like, oh, I've done nothing but smoke cigarettes and drink Dr. Pepper. And, like, I've lived to 105. I don't think they're having sex with me. They're just, like, hanging out in wheelchairs. I think it just depends on what your priority is. Also, <laughs> I think that grandmother is that same grandmother from Wedding Crashers. Is there any way you can find that out? I, I probably. <laughs> but I'm not going to. <laughs> um, let me actually look it up. <laughs> I think it is. Let me see. Mm-hmm. But in the meantime... Oh, um, this... So you said it wasn't the worst... What is that? The well, cherry? The... Yeah, this is a cherry seltzer. Okay. It's kind of, It's okay. It's not as I good. usually drink those. That's my thing. It's, um, it's fine. It's alcohol. Okay, let's see. So, did you... So, you said it wasn't the craziest thing you ever watched. I mean, of the two episodes... What episode was I on? The 50th episode? Yeah, you were okay. on the 50th episode. So, between the 50th episode and now, like, um, both of them were s- not stupid, but silly. Well, yeah, the last episode you were on, we covered um, Conspiracy, and that was the one with the 
it was from I think it was season one or season two of TNG with the bug that like infiltrates people oh, yeah. and they shot him in the chair right. and it was like super gross probably the most gory thing that's right and so that was a while so you ago. gave me the most gory episode and, and then now, you gave me the most horniest weirdest this is probably definitely the horniest episode oh, gross. even though Riker's on it so I, mean, I, I, I feel like Riker is just sitting around at home reading some like sexy romance erotic. novels erotic erotic <laughs> from Futurama Luna can we can we add erotic sounds from Futurama Okay. Erotic. What? Erotic. 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 But actually, that's to speak of that lady, the old woman, her name is Ellen Abertini Dow, All and right. she was in The Wedding Singer, oh. The Rap and Granny, and oh. she was in Wedding Crashers, the one that says those super homophobic things. Okay, so she's got she's got a history. So All she right. so she was in the Sub Rose episode. So that is fun. like so specific that you would find that out but of course it would be something that you would I find. would be like I think that old woman is the one from <laughs> wedding crashers and wedding singers so there you go but no I um I enjoyed it it's just again it's a very cringy episode so maybe I shouldn't say I enjoy it I always pass it over but this is an episode that people usually like to review and like to talk about because it's so like bad hmm. it's kind of like one of those things and I just don't know where I would love to talk to Jonathan what's it say Frax yeah, Frakes. Frakes or Frags? I call it Frakes. I think you're wrong. <laughs> well, he actually lives in the summer in Belfast, Maine, which is like... An Just hour, where we were. It probably is like an hour and a half of south where we were. Oh. Okay. So, and it actually, there's nothing in the town except like this grocery store, and that's it. And so um, Dick mm-hmm. was like, oh, maybe we'll see him, but who knows. Um, I just... So to start off, there's a couple of quips I have with the episode. It didn't make sense that this sexual being could like enforce the weather patterns which was like a kind of a b subplot (laughs) and then start to affect the enterprise because you think oh if he's purely going after plasma to like keep him and have a host you think he would pick like an entire starship because then i could like power him forever and not just like one person so I thought that was uh, I think the dude's horny. I don't think he's... Yeah, I think he's got some there priorities. Lot, there was a lot of uh, <laughs> orgasms in this episode <laughs> that like... definitely didn't need to um, crush her. I barely know her. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think Picard was a little uh, jealous. He was of... definitely jealous. I think you're right. I mean, I don't know what their history is. I don't watch the show, but oh, okay. just from his uh, mannerisms, he seemed a little jelly. So, so the history of Picard and Crusher is like they have a complex history so and forgive me all my trek fans and this is a good refresher too they were quasi maybe interested back in the academy she married and then she got interested with crusher jack crusher who is wesley's father but also like picard's best friend and turns out that jack died and so it just randomly died. He was on some mission with Wait, Picard. Wait, they have all that technology and they couldn't figure out, like, why he died? Well, he was, like, he was on some mission, I forget. And he oh. just, like, died. And then after that, okay. they didn't really speak. Because then it was, like, Picard had to tell, hey, your, your husband's dead, etc. So it was super traumatic. Super awkward. And super awkward. And they have, like, this sexual tension all throughout oh. the beginning seasons of TNG. And then they have... They have, like, in TNG episode, like, when this episode was made, they have, like, breakfast together every morning. They're mm. definitely involved in each other's lives. and So, like, they're pretty much dating. But not. But not. But okay. they're, like, cool, cool friends. And then later on in Picard season three, we see that we learn that Beverly Crusher has a son with Picard shortly after, like, oh, the last movie. Oh, snap. And so she keeps it hidden in secret because the son, and spoiler for Picard season three, the son is half Borg. Because Picard was assimilated into the Borg. So he's half Borg, and that's who the Borg want to go after. Um, And so they have a very complex, very complex history. I am so in the weeds right now. I'm not going to ask you. It's okay to be. I'm not going to ask you any more questions. (laughs) Do they have a history? Oh, they do. We're just going to leave it at the fact that they have a history. They have a very, they have a, like a high school couple. They have a a very big history. A weird history. Mm -hmm. They have a very big history. Okay. We'll just just go with that. (laughs) It just to me it was kind of why I was surprised it was directed by Frakes because it's kind of very poorly written. They just kind of normally in Star Trek episodes they have like a plot and they have like a subplot, and this one's just 
no, it's his Ronin affecting the ships, and then he's using the grandma's body to kind of, I almost like, re like possess her, and then reanimates her, raises her from the dead, and uses her body again. I think this would be called a filler episode, Jonathan. <laughs> it it is halfway through season seven. I yeah, it was definitely halfway through season. So it definitely could have been a filler episode, but. I think they were trying to make it like a scary horror episode, and it just really fell completely flat. So. It just seems like a really bad romance novel. Yeah. <laughs> because it's kind of... But to me, what I can't get over it, and every time I watch this episode, is it how disgusting. For 800 years, every single woman in your family... You've been boning. Have been boning. <laughs> so not only is there 800 years of just boning... There's 800 years of infidelity. <laughs> so it's just kind of like, oh yeah, every single marriage in the past 800 years has been this side chick or side guy. Side guy. Side guy for 800 years. Like that is like, you are just, a, talk about a foundation. I think as uh, a husband or, you know. I would be pissed. To I be would like, be feeling inadequate. Because it's like, what's this ghost peni? Be- Penis. It's not even, I don't even know it. It's not even a penis. It's like he just like consumes. He's like using this biblical language of like, we're going to become one and we're going to just, we're all going to be about each other. And it's like, all right. <laughs> and it's, to me, I think that's the nastiest whole part of it is that it's 800 years of that. And I just can't get over that part of the show. And that's usually why I skip it because it's like, it doesn't add any value to the show, number one. Number two, it's just nasty. <laughs> to be blank this is nasty tell me how you really feel well, that's how i really feel huh. but anyway i know you took you took a lot of notes i did i didn't want to skip anything or miss anything um <laughs> i just love how she was talking who was she talking to the other woman that was deanna troy 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 okay. it's like riker's love interest. she just looked like she was just over it <laughs> you know what i mean she's like okay here we go with this okay. ghost thing again yeah, yeah. Yeah, near the end. I, it was definitely weird. Again, so 10 forward where they were talking is kind of like the club. Okay. Like it's kind of like the cafeteria kind of after Wait, work. they call it the club? No, it's it's not a club. It's called 10 forward. But it's like a bar. But it's like it's public space, you know? Oh, oh, oh And so okay. like they're talking openly. She's like, I had a very sexual dream. And I've never felt that way before. I love how close she is to Troy to just be like, hey, co-worker. Hey, co-worker. I just... <laughs> I, colleague well i mean they've been together like serving on the same ship for seven years so they're probably very close in a way okay but again i could understand like talking like in the setting we're now like we're in our in our home could you imagine it's private two people could you imagine john luke overhearing that like or oh. just any well there's people walking around them and they're like i've never been touched that way before and i was like is this realistic like <laughs> are people gonna be like what the are they talking about <laughs> like and then I love Troy. She's like, well, actually, let's get to these uh, personnel yeah, she reports. To move on. She's like, let's kind of get back to work here. I'm like, that's, I couldn't imagine joining a Zoom meeting with a coworker and being like, well, I just, I had the most crazy experience. My body's never been touched that way. Like, okay. Um, it sounds like it. <laughs> it sounds like it. You might need a hug or a friend. Mm. Um, but my thing was, is uh, I love how. John Luke comes in to check on her, and she's like in the middle of this whole scenario. We'll call it that. It's like, oh, gross. Oh, oh. She's incapacitated, and incapacitated. that's and that's probably. I'm honestly going to probably use that like photo as like the cover art for the podcast episode. Mm, lovely, because it's like iconic, like her laying down the green orb thing over her, mm-hmm. and then you hear the knock at the door, and I'm like, oh, it's so. And she didn't even like. She didn't even answer it. Yeah. Because she's a... Uh... This makes me think of that movie, Ghost. <laughs> ghost. Ghost. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I, I can't help but think of Ghost and now, Roundhouse without thinking of Family Guy. Now, I wonder if Jonathan Frax was inspired by that movie. To Probably. Make... That's like, so gross. Wait, what he... year did that come out? Ghost? Yeah, it was like a late 80s movie. I think so. Patrick Swayze. Look it up. Out. Make it so. <laughs> okay, Ghost came out in 1996. 1990. Okay. And then let's see when this episode came out. It has to be like... It has to be like John was like, that would be a good plot. We just spice it up a little bit. Okay, this one came out in 1994. That was the original Okay, so four years later. So four years later, it's just... So it's Encanto slash a little bit of Ghost Ghost. with Patrick (laughs) Swayze, but there's no pottery scene. So he interrupts her, and he almost gets killed because Ronan, which... 
first off, is Ronan a 16th century or 15th century name in Scottish name? I, don't know. I feel like Ronan's like Japanese, like 47 Ronan. Well, that it's spelled different, but oh, is it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Ronan spelled O in the show is R O N I N. I think it. I don't. Let me check. <laughs> I think I've been drinking too much. Ronan. What? Yeah, 47 Ronan. It's spelled the exact same way. Oh, is it? Yeah, okay. it's spelled the same way. Oh, my God. So that's like that's like a name. Hold on. Let me look up. If okay, it's, it's, if it's a Scottish name. Let me look up Ronan origin. It's a Japanese origin. So why is the 1647 ghost have a Japanese name? It is deeply historic name, tracks all the way back to feudal Japan, where Ronan is is referred to a masterless samurai. Yes. So they are outcast yes. due to their lack of feudal commander. Yes. No, well, Ronan is actually R-O-N-A-N. Not according... Oh, oh, I know what they did. R-O-N-A-N. That's how you spell... But that's like Irish origin. What is R... But he... Like, only thing I know is we had the subtitles on. Oh, it's for it, the name of 12 Irish and Scottish saints. Oh, so, okay. okay. So he's a Scottish saint. I don't... I don't know how they spell it in the show. Is it R O N I N? Well, I know in the subtitles, this is hard hitting news. So I know in the <laughs> subtitles, it was Ronan, like R O N I N, but that could just be Paramount Plus's poopy Terrible subtitles. subtitles. So okay. it, it probably is the Scottish Saint. Okay. So okay. mystery solved. <laughs> I, um, this is a hard, I mean, this is what no, people this, this tune is, in. They're like, where's Ronan? Well, this is what we do when we're privately together. We, like, look up things. Like, who was in yeah. this? And, like, what's the name of a that? Lot of podcast. Yeah, a lot of well, podcasts. Yeah. It's fine. That. We're just, yeah. you know, giving people. Well, normally I have a script. Like, and it's like, like, Luna oh, no. writes the script. You're raw dogging it. And now we're just raw dogging it. <laughs> we're the, just raw dogging. I hope nobody knows what that means. Urban I th- Dictionary. I think everybody knows what raw dogging means. But I, I don't think maybe. I'm going to have to put the little E next to the episode description. <laughs> because normally I don't talk about raw dogging it and uh, horny and erotic stuff. That, well, that's what this episode is, John. But plus, like, I just don't understand. Like, so she was willing to just give up everything for... Day. The, like, the and boning only, was that good. She, was, she only knew him for like two days. That's all it takes, baby. That's all it takes. But I feel like... <laughs> I feel like okay, so I, I get the two days thing. Okay, but I feel like if if it was really just a, like I feel like he had like he sucked power from her. I don't or like to extend his life was that part of the episode? I think so yeah, yeah, yeah. Like so that's how he kept alive was that she was the host and that he needed that to draw power from her. So did that. And that's what she says at the very beginning of the episode is that Howard women live exceptionally long lives because he keeps them alive. Mm. So it's like, okay, that's interesting. So he keeps them alive. But I just think this is such a weird family history. It's like she said, like Hank Williams Jr., it's a family tradition. But instead of drinking and smoking, it's it's bone and ghost. I have a question. Okay. Crusher doesn't have any children at this point, correct? No, she has Wesley. Well, not a female. She doesn't have a female. No, she, and she doesn't have a daughter at all. So it would, she has Jack Crusher Jr. Well, he's not interested in the dudes. It seems. <laughs> maybe he is. Maybe he could. You got to be progressive now. <laughs> like maybe, maybe the it's a progressive ghost. But say he wasn't. Would he die? He did die. Okay. No, I meant like if if he like took Crusher and was like, we're gonna spend the rest of our life together. Oh. Blah blah blah. Would it? Would he die with her? Or would he, he just? Would, oh. Yeah, like he, she would have to eventually pass on. Like there would be kin there. Like he would have to pass on kin. Like she, she would have to have a daughter, pretty much. Yeah. So like, you're, would he just die, or would he just find like a new host in like a different family? Well, that's what that's what Quinn says. He's like he's wandering the earth or whatever, looking. Okay, for so somebody. maybe he could just find a new family. Maybe, but for eight hundred years, you think he? And then he makes. And this is something I wanted to talk about. This dude is an entirely abusive relationship. A thousand percent. He's like, I want you to change your eye color. I want you to change the way you act around people. And then, so when when John Luke knocks at the door while they're boning, and he walks in, it looks like and feels like kind of one of those like abusive relationships when you're like, hey man, you need to get out of this. <laughs> it's intervention. And he's like, no, I'm fine. Everything's cool. Get away. No, it's leave me alone. So it's like, that's kind of the vibe I get. It's like he was almost an abuser. Kind oh, of he was totally mentally and emotionally abusing her. Yeah. Even, I think, in some ways, physically. 
because at the beginning of the episode because the boning was so good but at, the, <laughs> at the beginning of the episode he like lights the flames himself i guess through the ship and then like starts derobing her and she's like i thought it was a dream and it's like no it's not a dream you just you just got molested by a ghost. <laughs> you just got molested. It's called consent, brother. It's the 24th century. You gotta ask. Um, he's 800 years old. He doesn't know that. <laughs> he's like, mm. would he be racist because he's like 800 years old? Would he be like? <laughs> I don't think he's racist. As I don't much know. As going down that rabbit hole. He's just misogynist. He's very misogynist, but um, I, I do agree with that. But maybe, and that's the thing. Like, if it's a host, I just don't understand him not wanting to stick with the Enterprise. Or stick with like a bigger power source. He needs something with a cellular, at a cellular level, right? Oh, that's level, right. right? You're right. And You're... so like ships don't have that. He needs like a human cellular. He needs yeah. that. I mean, he was still encompassing the grandmother even. Yeah. Because they were like, oh, we have cellular, like anaphasmic. That's probably not the right word. Cause <laughs> I've been but it's like some type of energy in her on the cellular level. Can I just say, I was very impressed at how they were like, let's exhume like, this coffin. And then it's like barely an inconvenience. It was like, there it is. <laughs> well, it was transport. Like, and even grandma was still smiling. Like, didn't she look like she was smiling in the coffin? That's gross. She's like, she enjoyed her life. <laughs> she probably did because she just like. She was boned at 100. But my thing is. From a cellular level. <laughs> okay. So what if this guy has been keeping the Howard line involved because like Crusher and this is actually really funny because this episode is so terrible but we get an insight into Crusher's personal life that we don't get in any other episode correct me if I'm wrong let me know but like her mother died when she was like pretty much a baby she's like I remember her holding me and like laughing with me and that was it and then her Nana raised her see that doesn't appear in my recollection of anywhere else in Trek so it's kind of like, holy crap, this has huge significant implications for her character. Wait, wait, wait. If the boning was so good for her mom, right? why, why did she die so early? Well, maybe because he was still with the grandmother. So I guess he has to wait till the grandmother dies, and then he goes to the mom. Oh, so the mom probably then, just died of something else. Yeah. Did she say what she died no, of? No, she didn't. Uh, no no other episodes she talks no, about? No, I don't talk about that at all. Interesting. Okay. I mean, I get the the doctor, like her her grandmother was a quote unquote healer, healer, and then which whenever somebody calls themselves a healer, I just immediately think of these like essential oils. But I'm like, <laughs> that's not um, okay. That's our other cat, but yeah. So I don't know. I will keep that in. That's cute. We'll keep it. In. <laughs> um, but we yeah, whenever yeah anybody calls themselves a healer, I think of essential oils and crystals. So we've been going for about almost thirty minutes now. Um, <laughs> Do you have any like anything else you want to cover or last thoughts on the episode? Or where does where does this rank in Trek for you? Because you're very limited in your Trek exposure. Let okay, well, of my two episodes, I would rank this um, funnier than the. It's funnier. It's funnier. I. That's probably. I mean, I'd have to watch more episodes to really give a good comparison. But I thought it was entertaining. But you know, it's yeah. It's definitely different, and that's probably not good because, like, there's some episodes that are just very straightforward track, like, oh, the holodeck went crazy, or, like, the shuttle, we're going to do, like, a rescue mission or survival mission. There's a lot of survival ones out there. Or um, interaction with another, like, delegate or diplomacy or archaeological thing. Mm. It just really depends on the episode of track, but... Um, it just seemed like it was a filler episode. It, like it definitely considering was. I haven't seen anything else, like really, I, it just it just felt like that. But it's a filler, but it does, yeah, have it does have significant consequences. I though. think if it does, like you said, that he that Picard had John Luke Picard, yeah, had a history with Crusher. I could see it being like, hey, I have feelings for you, and I care about you and your well being. Um, I'm gonna make I'm I'm gonna prioritize like your well being. Yeah. And so I could see that kind of like pushing that along a little bit, you know? So. Yeah. yeah, that's definitely it. It's, um, in Trek, like, and I understand it's kind of hard to write, but it's, um, yeah, it's definitely one of the top silly episodes. Like I mentioned before, like, I don't know if we got cut or not, but like in Voyager, there's an episode where these two people, Janeway and a guy named, um, 
Tom Paris. That's right. Mm -hmm. I'm a little inebriated. (laughs) Tom Paris, they actually um, become salamanders. And they have babies. Sure, why not? (laughs) And so it's like, so things like anything's off the table. I mean, anything's on the table with Trek, but to me, it's not one of the best ones. I I definitely didn't enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So, um, like I said, I usually skip it. This is the first time I've seen this episode in a couple years. Oh, wow. So you're well overdue. Yeah, I'm well overdue. I don't know. Would you want to do this again? I'd do it maybe? again. Like maybe for your, wait, what episode is this for you? So this will be either number 89 or 90. Depends because I'm right in the middle of Star Trek Strange New Worlds mm. review. So mm. I have the fifth episode to review of that. I demand to be your. You want to do 90th? Yeah, I want to be 90th. Okay, so then I'll I'll record and do, and do all that for the 89th and then this will be 90th. All right. And so you were on the 50th. And then now you're on the 50th or 75th? You're 50th. I don't know. <laughs> How many? So you don't listen to the podcast. I don't. Right? I love you, but I don't. I support you in my spirit. I think last year when I went to Maine, you mentioned that, yeah, you played it in the background or something so you could hear my voice. I did. I missed your voice. So I actually listened to your podcast. That's cute. Yes. I know um, Jason listens to it. He just told me he listens to it. But I think you, I think he is probably the only close friend of mine that listens to it. Ah. Now, if I had like a college football or like some big thing that everybody was interested in, I'd probably get a lot more like family listeners. But mm. Star Trek was very mm. low on the totem pole. Mm. People were like, whatever. <laughs> Even Strange New Worlds, like my listener rates like cut in half compared to Picard. Mm. Like people just loved Picard season three, and rightfully so. But... I've seen a couple episodes of Picard. It's not bad. Did you? I did with you, and if he has that vineyard, right? That was like, oh, we watched season one together. Yeah, that's what we, that was. Wow, that was forever. ago. That was like pre-pandemic. Yeah, and then I got bored and I stopped watching. Rightfully, yeah. Season one was not the best. Season two was not good. Season three is probably the best Trek we'll get out of like in the next like twenty years. I well, think. with this writer strike going on, who knows that's when a, you'll that's get- another big thing, like the writer strike. So. <laughs> They can use... Have you heard about that? I have. So they can say, all right, you background actor, we're going to pay you $200. This is not a... a, a so we're completely leaving Sub Rosa. We're going to go to the writer's Forget strike. Forget that. Because, <laughs> well, the writer strike is actually important because, like, it affects Star Trek. It does so, affect Star Trek, yes. Um, so they said for $200, we can use AI and put you in any background in perpetuity forever. So mm-hmm. I immediately think of, like, they could put me in, like, any type of pornography or degrading film or anything and I have no say anymore and I don't get paid anymore. Or they could put me in a world class Oscar winning film and I get nothing for it. Mm-hmm. So it's I don't think this strike is gonna end anytime soon. Yeah, so who knows when you're gonna get the next anything Star Trek. So, now for my English stuff, Bridgerton, all that, I think we'll keep on rolling. <laughs> maybe. Do or or is Bridgerton staff part of SAG and WGA and all I that? I don't think so. I'm not sure. Well, that's like American stuff. Yeah, but this is like English. And, you know, and even things that have already been, you know, written and they're currently filming, like Deadpool. They and, stopped Deadpool. They, I thought they were still filming. They stopped it. Because it was like as long as you weren't... Oh, because the actors and everything. Well, I knew that they were filming up until the, the strike for them because as long as they weren't adding to the script... They could but, keep filming. Yeah, and so I actually made an episode about that in May, and I don't know if we talked about it like off the podcast, but um, they can't add or take away from the script. Yeah. So any so that really backs you into a corner from a production standpoint. Because there's constantly changes going. Yeah, on. they're always constantly comings and goings, changing. Even actors be like, I don't like that line. I'm going to change it. You couldn't do any of that. Mm-mm. Just the WGA strike, which has been happening since May. And so now we have this. And I heard Ryan Reynolds was still kind of doing some ad-libbing. And he stuff could like have. Yeah, and you know how Ryan Re- Reynolds is. I mean, he definitely could have. But I just don't think it's... What is it? I, it's just going to be very difficult to see how long it, it takes. Cause, so for the Star Trek world, Strange New Worlds is, of course, completed and done. So we're going to get our ten episodes. We have five more episodes after last or this week's. And then after that, we have... Prodigy was canceled, taken off for financial reasons. You um, you actually really liked Prodigy, right? It was it was it was endearing because um, it was supposed to be a kids show, but it definitely grew on you. Because I think it was only ten or eleven episodes, so it definitely grew on you. It took me a long time to get in, probably like oh. literally half of the episodes to get into it. Okay. 
but I was like, okay, like I have to. It's Star Trek, so I feel like an obligation. Wait, is that to watch something it. that we would show like our son? Or yeah, something? like okay. I would let I would let our son watch it a hundred percent. Okay, because it's it's for kids. Nickelodeon makes it. Oh. Um. So yeah, so you kind of have to like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You kind of have to like. It's for kids, but um, he can't watch it now because they took it off the stream. Oh, they just yeah, that's right. Because of like they just count as a loss yeah it's right. a financial loss for the year so mm-hmm. that's sad because if you actually really enjoyed it and you want to go watch reruns you could yeah and so the problem is now they have season two made and season two is going to come out in december so everybody's like okay we'll get i think we have a fifth season of discovery coming out let me see when that's supposed that's to one thing about out. star trek y'all just keep on trucking maybe fifth discovery season let me see when that comes supposed to come out why why won't they just tell me when it comes out? <laughs> I'm going through this article and it's like, when will it come out? Oh, this is when the... Te- okay, again, I'm literally like a thousand words into this thing. When can I watch it? How about now? <laughs> so it probably, hopefully maybe 2023. That the early 2024, that's what it says. Oh, okay. Um, so it's early 2024 and then... Prodigy wasn't supposed to be till 2024, like December 2023, mm-hmm. going into 2024, mm. like split in half. So we're not going to have any new track from probably could be a delay. We may not get anything till the summer of 2024. Well, it could be worse. I feel like it could be like a whole year. Yeah. Like, and, and it might be. Mm. And that's if they, I mean, that's if they end the strike now. And that's not only our, like, that's a bunch of other shows we watch, like Platonic on Apple TV or... Um, a bunch of different shows we watch, like off, you know, their non. It seems like this is gonna be a rerun year. <laughs> it's gonna well, even movies, everything gets delayed. Mm-hmm. So it's like, um, like the Oppenheimer people. Did I, you tell me that? Yeah, they walked off set, like they're off their um, premiere. Premiere, yeah. That's crazy. But like you know, what's his face? The director was incurred. Christopher Nolan. Yeah, yeah, Christopher Nolan was supportive of it. So. Of course, like he's not. I mean, yeah, he's probably members of. Maybe a director's guild or something, but mm. I think um, I think it's definitely going to keep going. Unfortunately, I don't think there's any because now the AI and kind of Chat GPT and the future of writing and acting is in, in flux. It might be for a while. Yeah. So, which I'm perfectly okay with. Outside of, I, I say Strange New World season two is actually pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, four episodes in, I need to watch. I need to finish watching the fifth one. Wow! Wow! You are. I know. I'm behind. Wow! Slacking. Um, but that's why I make episodes like this because then. Not everybody listens to Strange New World. So I did, like, the Planet of the Apes primate directive. Do people like that? I assume people like that. Mm -hmm. I've gotten good reviews and good good feedback from Mm -hmm. people. But, um, yeah, so we're trying to make things in between. Yeah. So it's, it's like, almost two episodes a week. So it's a lot. It is a lot. I mean, I think it's entertaining that I don't watch Star Trek. I've seen two episodes now. Yeah. So don't know what i'm watching but it's entertaining <laughs> well i think you have an idea you've seen some movies with me right no you haven't seen any of the movies wait we watched wrath of khan i think we first started dating was maybe like, that was like 10 years ago <laughs> it literally was like 10 years ago <laughs> maybe don't ask me what it's about did you watch it with somebody else um no <laughs> <laughs> i didn't become a star trek fan until i was thinking was I past my last relationship? I was past my last relationship with my with my ex. That that's when I started watching Star Trek. I watched it on Crackle because it was free, and I watched the, I watched the original series, mm. and so that's how I got into Trek. But I never watched Trek with anybody but you. So mm. that's that's the mango one. Mango, yum. Yeah, that's a white claw. Okay. Did you kill your blueberry? Yes, I did. Okay. Well, I guess we can wrap it up. We've been here for about close to 40 minutes. Maybe less than 40 minutes because I'm going to cut out a lot of the... Um, what was it? The, the, I won't mention it, but uh, the chair interaction, the chair issue. So yes. I'll cut that out. But, well, thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. It's been fun not having just me on the podcast. So. I love being here. I love watching things I have no clue about. <laughs> do you know there are podcasts? That's where all they, all they do. That's all they do. They have somebody that is like a Trek 
Trexpert, and then they have somebody that has no idea. About I am Georgia. not a Trexpert. <laughs> I would be the Trexpert in this situation. But you are nice because you watch Bridgerton with me. Yes, I watch Bridgerton, and we share each other's shows. What other show did we watch? Um, we're currently trying to finish up Platonic right now. We have one more episode of that. But and like we, you know, we usually watch like all the Marvel shows, and you're not watching Secret Invasion now. I'm not. That sounds boring. But I will watch it's, like Loki and stuff like that. Secret Invasion's getting there. It just seems me. It's kind of me. So I'm, a, I'm superheroed out, so you're lucky I think, if I... I think I... all of America is superheroed <laughs> out at this point. But, well, anyway, thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, so that's been our review of Sub Rosa, plus a little bit of the um, writers and mm. acting strike. Mm. So the SAG and the WGA. I originally thought it was WAG, but it's WGA. Ah. So that's a correction from the last episode. Anyway, Luna, let's wrap it up. Go on, Luna. Thank you so much for listening, and I can't honestly believe, you know, some of those topics that came up, like the whole erotic fan fiction and Kanto about one candle controlling the whole house, and it's a former lover, and I'm like, this Wild Trek episode just keeps on giving. Anyway, thank you all so much for listening again, and thank you again to my beautiful wife for coming on the podcast and joining us on OPP today. And speaking of beautiful things, you should really check out www.jasontalksmovies.wordpress.com. If you're wondering, I mean, when am I going to get my mom for my birthday? What special gift, to, you know, that um, that special someone, a, a co-worker retired, I need to get him a going away present. Well, you can look nowhere else than Jason Talks Movies blog. He's got everything covered. And plus, if you need home renovation tips, check that out as well. He's got it all covered on his blog. He does a wide range of topics, so please check it out. And I'm in no way embellishing what's really on the blog. Um, Just kidding. I I believe, is that right, Looney? He's he's probably going to do an Oppenheimer review soon. And it's that movie was very good. Probably the best movie of the year. That's my uh, two thumbs up, but that's not really Trek related. Anyway, moving on. Um, As we sign off, remember everybody to look after yourself and look after the people around you and second start of the right. Straight on. Till morning.